The Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K is an amazing camera, and in my opinion, I think it way outpunches its price point for features like frame rates and resolution and codecs and audio inputs and all that awesome stuff that you usually don't find in a camera at this price point. And it's great for a wide range of shooting scenarios, all the way from big production with actors and film crews and sets and all that kind of stuff, down to even smaller stuff like YouTube content like this, or in my case, what I'm talking about for this video is filming weddings with this camera. Now, there's a lot of you out there that are gonna say, this is not the right camera to film weddings with, and for you, that might be the case, but for me, I have found it to be a great tool for filming weddings. Now, the pocket camera definitely isn't the perfect camera for filming weddings. For what I use it for, I found it to be almost perfect for filming throughout the wedding day. And so in this video, I just kind of want to talk about the different setups that I use, the different rigs that I use throughout the day, and you know, what resolution, codec, and all that kind of stuff that I film in throughout the wedding day. So if you're considering getting a pocket camera, especially for wedding filmmaking, maybe stick around and watch this maybe it'll help you out what's going on y'all if you're new here my name is Tyler I am a videographer based out of Charleston South Carolina and I also make YouTube content like what you're watching right now so if you like it hit that thumbs up subscribe all that good stuff and let's get into the actual content of this video because that's why you're here not to not to subscribe probably so before we get too far into it I just wanted to talk about the issues that I have with the camera specifically when shooting weddings so we can get that out of the way and we can talk about how I use the camera throughout the day. First thing is battery life. It's no secret, the battery life in this camera really sucks. Get like maybe 45 minutes tops uh, on a single battery. They have made a battery grip, which I'm super excited. We got my pre-order in for that. Really stoked for that to come in. I'm really excited to uh, get a little longer battery life, especially for weddings, unless you have to switch batteries the more shots you can get, so super stoked on that. And the other thing that I wish the camera had was some sort of autofocus while recording, like the dual pixel autofocus on my Canon cameras. Don't freak out, I know it's a cinema camera and it's not supposed to have continuous autofocus or whatever, but I, I don't know, I disagree with that. My Canon C200 has it. It's a great tool to have, especially when you're flying it on a gimbal or steady cam or something like that and you can trap track subjects at a really wide aperture and kind of blow out that background. It just makes for a really pleasing, really unique look. Well, I guess not so unique anymore because, because you know, everyone does it. But for one man band stuff where you don't have someone pulling focus, it is a very convenient thing to have. Again, these are issues that are maybe more specific to me and my style of shooting, but I do want to point those out. So moving on to all the good stuff about this camera and why I'm actually filming this video to begin with. And the first thing I'm going to talk about is kind of the technical side of the camera and what I record in and settings and all that kind of stuff. This isn't a tutorial on how to set up the camera by any means, but this is just kind of giving you an idea of how I shoot throughout the day. So the first thing I do is I make sure that I have a preset set up in the preset menu that if I ever go out of any resolution or whatever that I'm shooting, I can definitely go back to that preset, which is 4K Blackmagic RAW at 12 to 1 compression. And that sounds pretty ridiculous to shoot a wedding in RAW. And with the exception of the ceremony, which I shoot in ProRes, I shoot everything in Blackmagic RAW because I'm editing in DaVinci Resolve and it's just like editing any other codec. And it's not as data hungry as even the higher quality flavors of ProRes. And that leads me to the media that I film in or record to, and that's these guys right here. Uh, I pretty much can stick to one, a single 128 gigabyte SD card. Uh, I gotta be a little bit more conservative at the end of the night. If not, a 256 gigabyte card will get me through the entire day, no problem. And the only exception is I use this guy, the Samsung T5 uh, SSD drive, and I just use that for the ceremony. Only reason being is, well, a couple reasons. Number one, I don't wanna take up uh, space on this card for uh, filling it up with the ceremony. I wanna have all this for pretty much every shot except for the ceremony. And for dumping footage and organizing onto my hard drive, I actually like to have the ceremony footage in a separate subfolder from all the different cameras so that I can really easily drag all those in for my multi-cam edit for the raw ceremony film and then I can use those bits and pieces for the highlight film that I make as well. So having them on two different drives just kind of makes it a little bit easier for uh, ingesting the footage into the computer just for organization purposes. And in the event if for some reason the SD card that I'm recording on corrupts or something like that, at least I still have the ceremony footage on this drive and I always am shooting with another camera anyways for pretty much the entire day. So if I lose that card, at least I haven't lost the ceremony as well. So uh, that's pretty much it. But yeah, these things are cheap too. 
So yeah, that's recording media. And because I shoot in Blackmagic RAW, I never worry about white balance. The only thing I do is during the daytime, I just keep it at ISO 400. I found it just to be a good balance of highlights and shadows. So I like keeping it at 400. And then when it comes to reception time, I'll just bump it up to 1600 or 1250 or something like that. And when I'm recording in 4K, when I'm rendering out to 1080p, the noise is pretty much almost gone and it looks kind of filmic as well. So yeah, another little benefit of shooting in 4K. And the last thing is audio. It's kind of a quirky way of setting up the audio for me, but I actually use one of the onboard microphones in one of the channels just as a mono mix. And then I use the three and a half mil input for a shotgun mic for the ceremony or anything like that. But the reason I do that is because I want to be able to, to take the microphone off really quick and I have to go change any audio settings when I put it on a gimbal and at least I'll still have some kind of scratch audio or something or if the battery dies in the microphone or whatever at least I have a backup audio track recording in camera without having to run an external recorder. Now the reason I do that is because I don't use the pocket camera as my A camera for getting audio or anything like that. I usually either record to a, an external recorder like a Zoom H5 or I will record directly into the Canon C200 for the officiant. And then I also record audio onto this little guy, little Tascam DR10 for the groom. So yeah, long explanation, that's what I use for audio. Just a quick way for me to make sure that no matter what, I'm getting some sort of audio signal into the camera. Kind of quirky, but um, it actually is kind of kind of convenient because I don't have to go through the audio things, whatever. So technical stuff aside, now I'm just gonna kind of talk about the camera and how I use it throughout the day. And I'm pretty much using this camera the entire day, with the exception of the exit, you know, like a sparkler exit or something like that. Usually it's at nighttime, and I like to have the Canon 5D for that. I love using the dual pixel autofocus because I'm usually down at like f 1.4, and it'll still track the subjects when I'm walking back. Just it's super convenient, so that's pretty much the only time that I put the pocket camera down. Otherwise, I'm using it for detail shots, some bridal prep, um, groom prep, all that kind of stuff. I use the pocket camera just because the image looks amazing, and yeah, that's just what I do, and I just I just have a ton of batteries with me for, for that. Now, my main rig throughout the entire day is this guy right here. This is a Lang P4S stabilizer. It's kind of like a glide cam, you know, Chinese knockoff version of a glide cam. And that's what I use pretty much throughout the entire day. I have on the bottom here, I have a Manfrotto quick release plate here. So I can quickly move from tripod to this or monopod or whatever with ease, with you know not having to change plates out or anything like that. It just makes it a lot quicker. And when I'm running the camera on this rig, that's all I have on there, just a camera and a lens. I don't even, I record to an SD card to keep it as compact as possible, so no external microphones or anything like that. That's why I just use the onboard microphone for scratch audio. I mean, I, I pretty much don't ever use the audio from it anyways. And I'll usually just have three or four LPE6 batteries in my pocket so that I can switch them out really quick. And I'll also have a bunch of battery chargers going as well so I can keep uh, used batteries on the chargers. And then once I've gone through those four batteries, I'll just switch them out with the other batteries that are all charged up and and I can kind of keep going through that cycle. And it's worked out pretty well for me. And I can, I can get through the entire day with like eight batteries or something like that. It sounds ridiculous, but at least it's not 16 batteries like you would need with the original pocket camera. So that's a plus. And then for the ceremony, I use a tripod obviously, and I use a little slider. Really the only reason I use the slider is it's just kind of like a makeshift rail system because I use a V-Lock battery that I just Velcro onto the rails and I run power out of that into the camera so that I can make sure that I don't lose battery or the camera doesn't die mid ceremony when it's recording. I do use a shotgun microphone on the camera during the ceremony just to get a little bit better audio, especially if it's really windy out, got a dead cat on there and uh, it's a little bit easier to sync up and post, but that's the only reason why I use it, just for scratch audio to sync and post, and then that audio is gone after that. So yeah, after the ceremony, once again, it's back onto the Steadicam, and it's just really switching between 24p and 60p using that high frame rate button. Super convenient to have. I wish all cameras had that. It's just so convenient to switch between frame rates. And that's pretty much what I do the entire day. I pretty much only use the 18 to 35, 
the entire day with the exception is sometimes I'll throw on my 70 to 200 for the portrait session if I want to get some more artistic looking shots or just to really compress the background. Looks super cinematic and looks amazing, especially in beautiful light. Anyways, guys, I uh, hope you found that helpful. Hope you found it useful. If you have any questions, definitely leave them in the comments below. Um, I think it's a great camera for filming weddings. You definitely need to get around the fact that it doesn't have autofocus and it doesn't have great battery life. So yeah, hope you found that useful. Um, if you did, definitely hit that thumbs up. Consider hitting that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. And I hope to see you in the next video. Peace.